Hey folks, Daryl Shergan here from Quest for Vape. I'm going to be doing a build today, and I am doing the rebuildable deck for the crown tank. If you guys haven't tried the crown tank, this is the top fill tank that has a 0.25 coil that you can vape up to 120 watts, and I have a video on that, and I have many different people vaping on that at 100 to 120 watts. I love it. It's one of my favorite tanks. I've been playing around with the nickel coil uh, for this on temperature control devices, and today I have straight over from China the rebuildable deck for the crown tank. Um, let's take a look at this, and then I'm going to dive up close. So this is it. That's the bottom. It's nice and chunky. I like this. It's got great airflow in the bottom. It's got two O-rings, one down here and one up on top, which I'll show you in a minute. But just let's look at this. These are the wicking holes. Sorry, I'm covering that. It's got two Cyclops slots there. Are the wicking holes. Get closer up there. Okay, there we go. So there you go. The rebuildable deck coil for the crown tank. And this top cap is very interesting. It's not, it doesn't screw on to the housing. It just pulls off. See, it's got these little notches. Try and get that in view. There we go. It's got these notches that just fit right in to the base. Okay, can you see that? Kind of just pressure fits right in. And it's got this O-ring here. That's all it needed was an O-ring right here. And uh, and that's enough, the pressure in the O-ring, to keep this on. So we'll see. I'm going to build it now. Now let's take a look at the posts. Those are the posts. Got a nice wide juice, I'm sorry, air hole. Let me try and get this right up to the camera. Here you go. There's the air hole. And then there are the posts with those screws. So you're getting a nice look. This is not available in retail stores yet, I think. Maybe it is, but anyway, that's basically it. Can you see that? Okay. First look. So let's go dive down, then I'm going to do the build. Now we can see there is the rebuildable. I take those pieces apart. There it is. These screws are tiny. They sent me a bunch of them. I'm using a little tiny blue screwdriver. I don't imagine I'm going to need much torque, and it fits in there. Deal with these little screws. Okay. You can see how that looks. Uh, just for the purposes of this video, I'm going to use the base of the RDA, excuse me, the base of the tank to mount the rebuildable deck. So I got something to work on. Pull this off, pull the coil out, and then mount this on an ohm reader just so I have some way to put it. I put my tank of juice off to the side. I'm going to save this coil. Barely even broken in. I've only been vaping on that for about the last week. So I still got another good week to ten days. Look at that. After a week, it's barely even. It, it looks brand new. That coil. These coils last forever in the crown. All right, so I'm just cleaning this out a little bit. I'll come back. Hey guys, Quest for Vape back again. Okay, so I showed you the base of the RBA deck for the crown, and then unfortunately, uh, 
I did the whole build, installed it, and that video didn't come out, but I'm doing this video now. So watch how it vapes. That's a nice vape. I am at 0.5 ohms. I did an 8 wrap of 24 gauge Samurai Blade. This is a competition performance wire uh, of some type of, I don't know, Nichrome 80, Nichrome 40, Titanium, I don't know, look it up with whatever Samurai, my friends over at Sunrise Vapor gave me Samurai Blade. Um, they also make good cotton too, but that's, so it's competition wire. So it has a lower resistance. I used that because I didn't want to use regular Canthal because I wasn't going to be doing, um, anyway, I wanted about seven or eight wraps. Canthal would have ohmed out too high. I'll play around and do a few more builds. I'll use Canthal. I also wanted the softness of that competition wire so I could wrap it around those screws. My first build on this RBA deck, I wanted to make my life easier. So I, eight wraps, 24 gauge Samurai blade, uh, around a two and a half millimeter uh, post using the coil master. And I spaced just slightly. I used my dental pick to gap those coils. They're not squeezed tight against each other. There's a slight gap between each one. And it was glowing nicely. I wicked it. So far, so good. No leaking, no problems. I did close off the airflow while I was uh, tightening this on there to keep that surface tension of the liquid. And, um, and I'm getting a great flavor vape, a nice dense vape. I'm at 41 watts, 41.5 watts, and it's something like 4.6 volts, and I'm getting a great vape. Probably the most exciting thing about this RBA is that you can build with nickel wire and then now use the crown on a temperature control device. And the uh, UL is also making a, an NI200 nickel coil, which I've had in videos that I've done. And that works great, too. But now you have a rebuild deck with nickel. If you want to use nickel, use nickel. If you want to use uh, anarchist wire, if you want to use canthal, whatever, you, your preference. You want to use Clapton's, you want to do a stovepipe. But the thing I like about this... It's nice and easy to work on as far as RBAs go. Those posts are wide apart. And look at how much room you have in there to put any size coil you want that will fit between there. It just has to not touch. All right. It just has to not touch and have enough room for some cotton to get to those juice slots. Uh, you just want to clog those juice slots with, with a bit of cotton. Don't, don't overpack it. Don't underpack it. It will flood and play around with it. Easier to do than a can than a, a K fund. Certainly an easier rebuild than a K fund. Man, those were tiny. That little tiny deck. I mean, I guess this is about the size of the K fund deck. I haven't compared them. I gave my K funds away. I no longer use those. Um, they are not necessary. They have been made obsolete in my world. All right. So now you see that. Um, should I? Okay, two things. It comes with two O-rings. All right. The O-ring here seals off the deck. That's what this uh, housing jacket, whatever you want to call this, the outside, uh, whatever you want to call that, on the rebuild deck, top cap of the rebuild deck. All right, that, that pushes snugly into an O-ring, and that's it. There's no threading, so it just pushes in there. There never was any pressure there anyway. So to seal... They figured out, okay, push it in there. Then there's a second O-ring that's down here on the bottom. I, I, I watched the first half of this video, and it, it kind of like rolls up like that. You see see it rolling up like that? So just make sure it's pushed down. That's going to seal it to the base of the tank. All right, but it, it stays there pretty good. Just make sure it's in place, and then when you screw that down, that's going to crimp in and seal it so no juice gets down into the base of the tank. Um, but that's basically it. Um, all right. Am I feeling ambitious? Yeah. Do you have patience to watch me? I'm going to stop this, and I'm going to go ahead and break that, break that perfectly good build down, and then rebuild it again. But now you watch me be. No dry hit, 41 watts, 0.5 ohms. 
and um, and a pretty high VG juice. I'm using I'm vaping on the waffle from Epicus Nebula, which is I believe a 90/10, maybe 80/20, but it's a high VG juice. No problems there. Tank's not getting hot. It's a good deal. All right, let me stop this so I can upload that to YouTube. Okay, so this is the RBA deck that I had just been vaping on. This is my build on it. You can see my cotton. Uh, I didn't have too much. I, uh, I built it. I pulsed the coils. They were glowing nicely. I made sure they were gapped nicely. You can see... Yeah, can you see... You can see my gap. You can see where the center of the coil is a little darker. Uh, did I burn my cotton? Let's let's see how I did. Let's see how I did. I vaped on it. I don't know. How do I measure? About a half a tank of juice, maybe. That's. That's an accurate measurement. All right. Look at that. I, I was a little hasty and I burnt it a little bit. So, you know what that tells me? That tells me that I packed it too tightly. I didn't cut my wick thin enough. Now, here's that coil again. Here's that coil. See how I, see how I situated it? right there above the airflow hole, centered right between the positive and the negative, one lead going one way, one lead going the other, and I made sure that it wrapped... Jesus, it's hard to do on camera. I wrapped it around the screw and back in, and I cut, I cut the lead on the inside. I did not want to have a piece of wire, one of those legs sticking out, shorting against the jacket, the housing, of the RBA deck. There's not much room. It just has to not touch, and believe me, it barely just not touches, but it does not touch. You saw me vaping on it, so that's the trick. All right. I clean this off a little bit. Let me show you how it pulses. I'm working backwards now. I'm actually going from a built deck to uh, the deconstruction of it. Show you, <laughs> show you how I wicked it backwards. Then I'm going to go put this in like reverse, and then you'll see me do the whole process. Never mind. I'm being silly here. So, burning off the excess juice. Okay, so here's the coil. Look how nicely that glows. Now, I'm not going to sit here and pulse this coil all day long. I do have a peak insulator over here, uh, insulating the one positive or negative, probably the negative. So I'm not going to sit here and fire this up. I don't want it getting hot without any juice on there. But I'm just showing you it's firing up from the inside out. There you go. That's ideally how it should look. All right. Let me dive down and show you guys a little bit of close-up. Okay. We're here. Nice. I'm doing a perfectly good, perfectly good, here, yeah. I'll even be nicer, take this off my IPv3, this is not an aggressive build by any means, put it this way, if you're doing a rebuild, you're not looking for an aggressive build, if you want aggressive, there's other ways of being aggressive in vaping. This is not it. Rebuild, you're looking for flavor, you're looking for a tank, you're looking for convenience. You're looking for a decent amount of vapor, but you're not cloud chasing with a rebuild. And you like to tinker. I'm going to say this is perfect for, like, Clapton's. I wouldn't mind playing around with this, sticking a nice... Stovepipe vertical clapton right in there. There's plenty of room for it. Okay. Just taking out a perfectly good build for your viewing pleasure. Enjoy. All right.
but this is something good to see. This is not the uh, the perfect version of the video. This is the nitty gritty. How did he do it? How did he bypass? This is how I did it. You see that little curl? That's how the end of my lead end up looking. All right. Let's go and repeat that process. Okay. Put that off to the side. Very nice. This guy right over here. Don't lose those screws. Very tiny. Now that they're in the deck, I'm not even going to take them out for any reason. Cut yourself off a good liberal amount of wire. You want those legs to be nice and long so you have something to grab onto and wrap. Alright, this time I'm going to do, I did eight, eight wraps before, now I'm going to do six. Do you mind if I only, and I'm going to do also, I'm going to do a three millimeter post, not a two and a half. Of course, I found that that was, I want a fair amount of cotton in there, but I found two and a half was a little too narrow. So, clamping down my lead, give it 90 degree bend. That's not what I want. That's the one. So now we got one, two, three, four, five, six. So if eight wraps was a point five, what does six wraps get us to? Probably around a point one six ish. Again, it's not Canthol, it's Samurai Blade. I don't know how you calculate that. I'll know when I get it on there. Okay, unlike when you do a normal coil where both leads go in the same direction, this is for the RBA. Both legs got to go in the opposite direction. Okay. Just like that. Just like that. With me. Could I neaten that up? Yes, I could. I don't. I don't have to though. All right. As long as they're pointing in the opposite direction, we are in business. So back to the rebuild. Leave the post in. post in the coil gives you something to hold on to. Okay? With me? Looks like that. This one going that way, this one going that way. Just get it in. That's what she said. <laughs> Alright, here's the tricky part. And I had it and I lost it. Okay, here's the tricky part. If you want, you could just tighten it down right now. If you want to be fancy, like me, go ahead and take it around. Have it pointing to the inside. I don't want it, I don't want there to be. All right, we'll try it this way. Fine. Since you insist. I have my coil centered right where I want. I know once I clamp these screws down, I'm I'm golden. So there's one. There's two. Fuck that. Get out of here. Can you see that? There we go. Right in there like that. Okay. Take that out so you can see better. Screws are tightened down. They're designed with enough precision. They're close enough. And that threading is very nice. It grabs. It's, I'm not in danger of stripping. This is a very nicely built 
rebuild. Okay, now here's the tricky part. You see how close? Do you see how close this outer edge of that screw is going to come to the housing? It's very close. So I can't have this sticking out. This leg can't be sticking out like at all. So ideally, if you've got some nice sharp flush cut. Ideally, you come along and do that. All right, let me take a look at that. I'm not thrilled about it, but I can live with it. But you see what I mean. It's all right, so it sticks out a little bit. If that sticks out far enough and touches that housing, it's going to short it out, and it's just it's not it's not dangerous, not harmful. It's going to just we'll get atomizer short, error reading. Not going to be able to date on it. So that's my concern. Does it? But the question is, does it come out past here? I mean, this is rounded for a reason. It's rounded so that it conforms to the shape of this outer jacket. This. So, for the sake of this video, I'm coming along and I'm cutting this with flush cut wire cutters. But if you were to take Daryl's advice, Quest for Vape only wants the best vape for you. Wrap it around the screw. Have a little bit of patience. Nobody's recording you when you do this. Um, have it show you. Here's the coil. Here's the leg. Comes around the screw. Have it wrap around and come back in this side, in this side, and cut it on the inside. Don't cut it on the outside like I did for the purposes of this video because when I put that when I put this on, if that wire so much as grazes, it's just going to be an atomizer short. Now I'll be able to tell right now. Oh, look at that, 0.22. Is that right? Is that upside down? 0.22 ohms. So it looks like it's fine and it's not shorted out. Yay for me. Okay. Do you have to gap them and space the coils? No, you don't. You can you can leave them tight in there like they are. See how you like it when you vape it that way, and um and then build it with them spaced and see how you like it vaping that way. When I'm pulsing the coils, I'm only using about 30 watts. I got a hot leg over there. See, that side heats up. It's all right. I just found that those coils were kind of too tightly packed against each other. But let's see. Yeah. It's just one one side of that coil is heating up way too fast. And I don't like that. I don't like when it does that. Then one side of the one side's wicking more than the other and it doesn't give me the, the best vape. See that? One way to fix that. Just, just come along, treat it like a spring, right? spread it out a little bit, come along with a dental pick, do this, just pull them apart a little bit. They, it's not an RDA build. They don't need to be snug up against each other. There could be a little bit of room. Watch, just that. Still too hot. Doing this on camera. On the fly.
and just stretching it out a little bit. It really performs better. See the gap? See how they spaced a little bit now? Watch this. Better. Better. Now there's three hot leg, hot coils instead of one. So you're starting to see an improvement. Spread it out a little bit more. I mean, I've got room. Use the real estate in there. You know, another thing that could mean is that this one connection over here might not be so good. The one side that's not heating up, maybe it needs to be tightened down a little bit more. Maybe it's backed out a little bit. No, oh, that's pretty tight. Okay, we'll go the other way. It's not an exact science. You're going to find yourself doing this. you got to troubleshoot. How do you troubleshoot? Walk around with it. You'll learn. It's still, I don't like the way this is heating up. I still only have half this coil suiting to my liking. Yeah, and the other half isn't even, I don't like that at all. It's like an American flag. And we have to. something wrong with that. I don't like it. It's not. It's not the RDA's fault. Relax. Don't blame the RDA. User error. This is Daryl. Maybe didn't. Hold this coil right. But my advice to you is space them a little bit so that they're not touching and they're not shoulder to shoulder. Space it a little bit. Let's see how it does now. Beautiful. Look at that. Beautiful. You want to see what the troubleshoot was? Real simple. On the one side, this hot leg, this hot leg coming right off right off the positive or the negative, whichever one it was, was tight up against the next one. And I put a little bit of a gap by pulling it out, and all of a sudden they're not jammed up against each other. And now look how nicely this fires. Perfect. That's exactly what you want. From the inside out, that's excellent. Okay. You guys, you guys got that? You got to see me. 18 minutes of frustration and uh, let me stop there. So I have a question I want to ask you guys. You're watching this. If you watch this video this long, why do I do this kind of stuff and then leave that in the video and not edit it out? Because I want you to see when you get jammed up on a problem, how to troubleshoot it. How do I troubleshoot it? Because you're going to have that problem sooner or later. So I'm not trying to show you the finished perfection. I could easily do that in about five takes. Cut out the, uh, the junk not look like a fool, and and then I would be lying to you, acting like I'm perfect every time when I with this vaping stuff. Now I'm going to show you something. You go a little bit wider than the diameter of the coil is how how wide you cut this strip. You do not want to pack this tightly. You want it loose. Instead of packing it tightly, I would go looser and cut the uh, the wick a little bit longer and have a little bit more in, on, packed in on the ends. You don't want to jam this up. You can either be too loose or too tight with your cotton on these rebuilds because it's not like you can get in there and mess around. Once it's done, it's in, the juice is in. You either got it or you don't got it. So, okay, so why am I showing you all this troubleshooting? Because I want you to be able to figure out how to vape to your satisfaction and get a good vape. And this stuff can be very frustrating. I've rebuilt K funds, K fun lights. I've rebuilt the Kanger sub tank, the Mini, the Delta II. Um, I used to just for kicks rebuild the Nautilus coils when I had one. 
and that's not fun at all. And that's not that's not a good time. Um, I just got tired of buying their coils all the time when they would go, and that was back in the olden days. So I'm showing you the troubleshoot of how to get once you've done all this work and you put that coil and you get it all tightened down and it's not firing correctly. How can you mess around with it to get it to fire right? Play with those coils, spread them out a little bit, or squeeze them a little bit. When you're when you're doing an RDA build, okay, you usually want to squeeze and pinch those coils together. When you're doing a rebuildable atomizer that's going in a tank, you want them possibly spaced out a little bit. And it's hard when you're used to pinching those coils tightly together and they glow so nicely, it's hard to go to this where the gap, but it doesn't have to be perfect, and that's how you get rid of hot spots. Also, interestingly enough, you have to do the same thing for nickel. Now, I want to show you how how I I go down a little bit. You don't need to see my face. All right. So some people come along and do it like this. Here you got the jacket, the top, whatever you want to call this, the housing of. Some people do it like this, and they tuck them both in, and they come down. That's one way of doing it. It's not a bad way of doing it. I'll do it that way. I can go along with it. It's kind of tight, though. So, so it work. All right, get that. I've got some I'm trying to be a criminal over here. There it goes. Okay. So you tuck the ends of that wick up out of the way. It's not behaving itself. All right. Here's the other way of doing it. Just you, all you want it to do is go from through the coil and down to the bottom of the deck. So you don't need a long thing like that, like with an RDA. You just, just like, literally like that's enough. Like that's literally, that's going to be enough. A little afro sticking off to the side. There you go. That's, that's plenty. I'll pull it through to even it up. Nice bow tie. That's it, guys. That's all you need. Just enough. All right, you know, some people will go juice it up now, so it's a little more manageable. Let me get my juice bottle. Here. The waffle. You can do that. It's fine. All right. I got a little juice on there. It's not so unruly. I'm still pushing it up out of the way. Here's how this goes. Tuck it in, all in under that top cap. And then sit the top cap down. The air holes, the air slots on this RBA line up perfectly with the ends of that coil. All right, now that it's in there, take a small screwdriver or a dental pick if you have torture devices and just tuck that in. It was facing up when I put it in, but now I want to face it down, hitting the bottom of that deck. The concept here is the ends of the wick line up with those wicking slots, catch the juice, and hold it there, and keep it from flooding. And as the coil heats up, it will draw, just like a straw, a capillary action, it will draw what juice it needs in from the tank. Okay. 
Let's see if I did my job right. Yep, it's firing. That also tells me before I go and waste a tank of juice if I have a short in the atomizer or not, if those legs stuck out too far and touched the outside jacket. Now this it doesn't screw in there, it just pushes down, that's it. That's all it needs. There you go. Rebuild, RBA for the crown. I already primed it, so it should be able to go, right? 30 watts. Let's see what it's oming out to. Oh, 0.22 we said, right? Nice vape. I'm not going to chain hit this the way I normally would hit the crown tank on a stock coil because I want to be a little bit more patient with this and let it wick. This time I don't have factory uh, precision. I have my own imprecision. So far so good. A very nice vape. That's 37 watts. Forty six watts. Hmm, that's vaping nicely. Interestingly enough, on the ohm reader it said point two two. Now it's reading point four ohms. So wicking and juicing it added quite a bit of resistance, believe it or not. Also that was after I heated up the coil, so maybe the resistance went up a little between heating them, spacing them out a little bit, and um, juicing and wicking. There you go, guys. RBA for the Crown Tank. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. Please share. Please like. Please make comments. Have a great day.